who's got two thumbs and is feeling awesome? This girl. I found my awesome shirt. It was hiding in the back of a drawer somewhere. <laughs> awesome. Hello, super friends. My name is Annie Pasquinelli, and welcome back to another episode of Superhero Saturday, where we talk about the art of superheroes, storytelling, and so much more. This week, we are talking about the main three characters in just about every single story known to humankind. And that's no exaggeration. This formula, which I use all the time in my own writing, is what I refer to as the golden trio. If you take a look at any story in any different kind of medium, you are bound to find a golden trio formula uh, much sooner rather than later. Some examples just off the top of my head include Harry Potter, Star Trek, Star Wars, Men in Black, uh, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Matrix, Avatar, 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 Avatar. <coughs> And the list goes on. Now there are a lot of different ways that we can categorize, analyze, and create golden trio formulas. But for this example today, we are just gonna focus on how members of the golden trio interact with each other, with the audience, and with their world. And that is by using the Aristotelian appeals. What are the Aristotelian appeals? Well, back in the olden days of rhetoric and philosophy, this guy named Aristotle is theorized to have come up with this formula for deconstructing an argument. Today, we often use the same things in writing classes to talk about persuasive papers. These are the ways in which we appeal the audience to come around to whatever opinion or position that we are posing to them. They are appeals by Aristotle. Aristotelian appeals. Ding! I don't know why I have to say ding. I always do my own sound effects. The three that are used most exhaustively are logos, meaning logic, pathos, meaning feelings, and ethos, meaning credibility. In a persuasive essay, when you say that A plus B equals C, or for example, where there's smoke, there is typically a fire, then you are using a logical appeal. If you say something that is supposed to create an emotional response in your audience, like, oh, look at the cute little kitty cat, then you are using an emotional appeal. Simple enough, right? The next one's a little bit trickier, but stay with me. When you make an argument that you have personally studied and experienced something that gives you authority to make a judgment call based on a certain topic, like, for example, I've been playing guitar for many years now, and I know what type of strings sound best on my instrument, then you are making an appeal for credibility. I know what you're thinking. Annie, what does all of this have to do with my favorite superhero story? Well, let me tell you. When you're dealing with a story that has a golden trio formula, typically speaking, each one of the different characters will use one specific argument appeal when making decisions throughout the course of the story. One of the characters will be a slave to their emotions. Another will try their best to use logic and reason to figure out the best possible solution to whatever problem they're facing. And the other will use their gut instinct or experience to make the most ethical decisions that make sense to them. To make this nice and literary, I have a little tool to help us remember each of these different ones. Logos equals logic, pathos equals passions, and ethos equals ethics. So how can you tell if a certain golden trio formula is using the Aristotelian appeals? Just take a closer look at how each of the characters react when they have to make a decision together. One of the easiest examples to take this apart is the Harry Potter series. Now I know this technically doesn't count as your typical cape and mask superhero, but Harry Potter is the chosen one with the special powers who uh, takes it upon himself to save the wizarding world uh, multiple times, so it, it kind of counts. Let's take a closer look. Hermione Granger is a classic know-it-all. She's the smartest witch of her age, and she loves to use logic and reason to figure out what to do in any given situation. Here it is. Nicholas Flamel is the only known maker of the Sorcerer's Stone. The what? Honestly, don't you two read? She relies on her smarts and cleverness to determine what will be the best solution for the problem that the Golden Trio is facing. She is our Logos character. Ron Weasley, on the other hand, is a man of passion. He frequently experiences bursts of emotion, whether that means he's determined to protect his family and friends or feeling petty and jealous about some perceived offense. Kill us faster! Oh, now I can relax! His first instinct is always to react with his heart. His fear, his pride, his love, and his compassion are his biggest strengths and his worst weaknesses. 
he is our pathos character. That leaves us with the boy who lived, Harry Potter. While Harry tries his best to use logic and deduction, this isn't his first line of thinking. Not to mention that he does plenty of things that make no logical sense whatsoever. Harry, no way. You heard what Madame Hoop said. Besides, you don't even know how to fly. What an idiot. He also experiences strong emotions, but he is self-aware enough to understand that emotional responses are impulsive and can cause problems in the long term. The way that Harry makes his best decisions are with his gut with his instinct, and with his own internal moral compass. When it makes just as much sense to go with the logical solution as it does to go with the emotional one, Harry makes a decision to go with whichever seems to be the most righteous. Ethics, justice, and fairness are his go-to solutions, making Harry our ethos character. You can do the same thing with just about any other story that has a golden trio formula. The classic example of Star Trek is really easy to read, with logical Spock, passionate McCoy, and ethical Kirk. Or with Superman, which features logical Lois, passionate Jimmy, and ethical Clark. This formula is literally found everywhere. But just because it's everywhere doesn't mean that it isn't effective. Even back in the days of Aristotle, people were using these three types of appeals to convince people of a point that they were trying to make. Storytelling is one huge vehicle that we as humankind have been using for thousands of years to convince people of a different point of view, to experiment with the application of morality in a given situation, to figure out how we should act in the real world once the story is over. By having three main characters who present each of the different Aristotelian appeals, you have a built-in mechanism for doing just that, and it makes your story all the more compelling. I personally use this formula in my book Stronger, which is the first in a series called The Fearless Nine, shameless plug, that follows a team of superheroes that join forces to save the world. It's a formula that is highly effective, extraordinarily engaging, and endlessly entertaining. Alliteration for the win. If you have any other stories that follow the Aristotelian appeals, go ahead and put them in the comments below. I'm kind of curious to see just how far this formula reaches. Make sure to like and subscribe and follow us everywhere on social media for more superhero-related content every single week. You can also find all my books and even more at our website at www.fearlessman.com. Thanks so much for watching, Super Friends, and we'll see you next week.